Hey folks, welcome back to Tomo's Tune Ups. So I've got a beverage in hand. We're gonna do something a little bit different today and we are going to sit in the car and talk about the Rolston Classic. So grab yourself a drink and enjoy whilst I sit here and talk. So today is the 19th of August, the day after the Rolston Classic. And I'll tell you what an adventure, what a trip, what a journey. It was just absolutely insane. This year we'd clocked over a thousand kilometers. I think it was about a thousand and thirty four to be honest. I'll put on the screen exactly what it is but it is a monumental amount of kilometers to do and that's from starting in Western Sydney, traveling to Newcastle, starting at Cameron Park, going down to Gosford, doing the Rolston Classic and then coming home as well. So it is a tremendous amount of K's to be doing in a classic car. So this episode, I just want to talk about what the Rolston Classic is and and how to get you involved and you know just answer some really basic questions on it. So what is the event and why should we do it? Well, why should anyone do it? Well, if you're into cars, there's no point not to. Like, honestly, it is probably one of the best adventures you can do and I don't know of any other drives you can do other than driving with a local car club you know every couple of weeks or months whatever it is to be able to get out and enjoy your classic vehicle you know it's not just about classic vehicles but it's also about learning your car you could drive a bmw 2002 you could drive a maserati you could drive a hyundai get it doesn't really matter it's not so much about the destination but it's about the journey and enjoying your vehicle not so much putting it through its paces and racing and making this massive event into this huge, elaborate, over-the-top, expensive adventure, but it's about just enjoying your vehicle for what it is. It doesn't need to be anything fast, doesn't need to be anything special. And one thing you've got to remember as well, with me being a mechanic, that I work on a variety of different cars. The majority of them nowadays are minis, which most of you already know because you've subscribed to the channel. But some of the cars that we work on are what we would classify as just a piece of shit. Just because you think it's a piece of shit doesn't mean that it's not someone's pride and joy. So it's very easy for us to judge one another with their cars and think, oh, this thing's a piece of crap, why would you even own it? But to that person, that might be the best thing they've ever invested their money in and they thoroughly enjoy it. You know, let me put this out there. How many people have bought a car and looked back after selling it and gone, I regret selling that car because of whatever reason it is. It may have just been fun, it may have been quirky, it may have been a, a car that you learned to drive in. You did something amazing in, and it was just a really fun vehicle to drive. And that's what it's about, just getting out there and driving those cars. So, my crew this year was only three people. It was myself, my father-in-law, also known as Pop, and it was my mate Chris. So Chris owns the 1330 Mini that we're currently working on at the moment. We're doing the engine rebuild and doing a couple of little things in the background. Most of it I've already covered on my channel, but the engine build, I just wanna you know, really specify a couple of different things and just walk through the process. You know, I try not to rehash a lot of the work that I've already done simply because you've already seen it and there are other videos out there in which you can see other people do it and maybe a little bit more in depth and a little bit more explained, but I just feel that rehashing stuff I've already done, there's no real point. So he came along for the journey and he thoroughly enjoyed it. At the moment, I'm currently rebuilding his gearbox because it had a little bit of play in the selector forks. And after doing that thousand Ks, he's pretty convinced now to get a straight cut gearbox. And it is a, a big commitment. Doing drop gears is an even bigger commitment, but straight cut gearbox conversion is pretty fun. It's expensive, but it's, it's a worthwhile thing to be able to do in any car. And the good thing about driving Grace is because I don't drive it all the time, it allows me to enjoy it to the best of my ability. And even though it does bug me, it does have rattles in there, I can still enjoy it for what it is. And when I'm done, park it up at home, put it under cover, and not worry about it for three weeks, and then drive it again. So it was pretty short this year. So on that note, and I'll briefly touch later if I remember, 
that if you saw me this weekend just gone and I said g'day and I kept moving and didn't seem like I was wanting to sit and chat to you, it's just in the background there's a lot going on to be able to film and record and get the audio and get all the footage that I possibly can as part of the Rolston Classic for not only my benefit but yours as well. And running such a short crew this year, it was quite hard that I couldn't just have someone out there doing all my filming and, you know, I go and chat to people. There are a couple of people that I sat down to and, and, and chatted with about a couple of things. But if it seemed like it came across that I wasn't interested or I just said g'day and kept moving, it was nothing personal. And I, I honestly don't mean that. I think I'm a, a fairly easygoing guy and I'm very approachable. And you just have to remember that if you're going to ever sit there and talk to me about cars, just be prepared to have a conversation and a half because I generally like to talk as I'm doing right now. So, yeah, please don't ever take offence to that. If I ever keep moving, it's nothing personal. I'm not trying to be rude or arrogant, but I do need to keep moving with stuff that I've got going on. So kind of at the early stages of my YouTube career where I feel that I'm starting to become more popular, which is great, and I don't mean to blow my own horn, but over the weekend I did get a lot more people recognise who I was, which is great because it means that what I'm doing is making an impact and people are recognising me and my skills. So if you ever feel that you just want to sit down and have a chat with me, please just pull me up and, you know, just tell me what you want to talk about. It could just be that you might want to know the right engine oil to use in your car. It might be your daily or, you know, you've got a rattle in your dash or that you need to replace a ball joint on your classic mini. Whatever it is, don't ever feel you can't hit me up because I'm always available. And if you notice on my channel, I generally respond to majority of the comments. Well, I honestly try to respond to every single comment that gets made on my channel because I want to try and be that big guy. Well, be that person, should I say. So if you ever want to get any contact with me, please, and you see me in the street, pull me up, sit me down, and, you know, let's have a chat. Um, or just send me a message on Instagram. So covering the event with footage was just next level. There's so much footage. I have been downloading it today, and one of the reasons why I take Friday and Monday off before and after the Rolston is to collaborate all of that, put everything together, make everything go as smoothly as possible, leave it a decent time on Friday so that way when it gets to Newcastle, we can sit back, relax, and we're not pressed for time. Now, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind leaving early Saturday morning to drive either up the coast to come back or to start at Gosford. But this year, I had noticed in the previous years that if I don't take the days off after, it becomes very condensed. And last night, I just got home and I passed out. I was just so exhausted from driving. I just needed that time off. So a personal tip is, yeah, take, take the Friday off, take the Monday off. And just, you know, if you need to work on your car, I gave Grace a wash this morning. You probably can't see because I didn't do the interior. But I gave her a bath on the outside. There's a couple of things that I want to do. That's another thing with the Rolston Classic that I was saying to Chris the other day. Was that when you do it, there's a lot of different things that you want to do with your car. And you think, yep, by next year I'm going to do that. I'm going to get this done. This is going to happen. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to change that dashboard. That rattle's going to go. And you generally tend to forget about it. And then the next Rolston comes around and you go, oh, crap, I forgot to do that. Oh, this needs to be done. Ah. So there's a lot of things that enable me to get that done. And by taking that day off work, it just enables me to somewhat have a good sleep in. I did this morning. I did till about six. And anyone that's got kids knows how hard it can be to have a sleep in. I dropped my son at school. My daughter's actually sick at home at the moment. So I'm looking after her, which is great. And she's asleep currently. So it just enables me to get back on the bandwagon, start editing and look at all the footage that I've got and then start sifting through it. And I've probably got over three hours worth of footage. So I want to really make the Rolston Classic for 2024 a bit of a feature length film and just kind of showcase some of the stuff that we go through. And some of the stops along the way and helping people is part and parcel of the event. Now, in saying that, you can stop as many or as little times as you like, which is great. There's no rush. It's not an actual rally. You don't need to get there ASAP. You don't need to be the first person. They do observation challenges. They do um, bits and pieces where you may stop for lunch. You know, you might meet up with a group of people. You might stick with someone the entire time. You may just go at your own pace. You may be in an old 850 that's slower than a wet week and a diesel Gemini and you're just cruising along and you get there at, you know, seven o'clock in the afternoon. That is completely fine. You can do it at any pace that you want. But stopping along the way, it's something that you think, oh, we'll stop here. You get out and you do it and then 
you go, get back in, then you keep going, you find somewhere else, you get out. And all those little stops just add up very quickly. And anyone that's done a road trip and has done that sort of thing, you know, you spend 15, 20 minutes here and there, it puts you behind. So you got to kind of judge when you drive as to when you stop. Obviously, stop, revive, survive is a very big part. And you do need to make sure that you do get that rest in as well. And if you have a co-driver, perfect. Swap with them when, when possible, because if not, then you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get worn out. And then there's fuel as well, and helping people along the way. I generally drive, and if I see someone pulled over, I pull over straight away. There's very few times that I don't, and generally my wife's in the car, which she doesn't come in grace, so it's never an excuse why I can't stop in grace. But I generally like to try and stop, because it's good to know that there's people out there who are willing to help. And it's not just in grace. If I'm driving my Hilux and I see someone pulled over, I like to try and stop. It could just be the fact that they need a phone, they may need some water, um, they're having a bit of a breakdown, they just need someone to talk to. Uh, they might need hand changing a tire or, you know, something's gone wrong. Just the reassurance of knowing that, you know, someone's there to be able to help them is always good. And it feels good to be able to give back to people. So I generally try and stop where I can and in some of the stops, I've, sorry, I've actually got my phone just off to the side of the camera, so I'm just looking off if that's why it looks like I'm not paying attention. Um, along the way, we'd actually got lost twice. So we stuck with this group of minis and we were coming out of Gosford and we were meant to hang a left, but instead we kept following it straight. And Chris is beside me going, we've got to turn left here, it's the, the B38 we got to go left. And I was like, you sure? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you're sure? And he's like, dude, that's what it says. The sign says this. This is what the paper says. Let's go. Anyway, there was probably seven or eight minis ahead of me. And I'm like, this is where everyone's heading. I'm just going to follow them. So once we turn around, instead of heading south, we started heading north towards Newcastle. And it was definitely not the way to go. So it wasn't until later down the track that we were driving and there was someone coming up beside me and I wound down my window and the lady's like, oh, she's waving. And I was like, we're going the wrong way. And she wound the window down to be like, what? And then her partner in the car is just, whoa, just taken off. So I didn't get to say it. So we kind of slowed down and, and waited and eventually people just pulled over and it pulled up beside these guys. I think it was the blokes from um, South Australia or Tasmania. And I was like, oh, hey man, um, we're going the wrong way. And he's like, what? And I was like, dude, we're supposed to be going that way. I said, we're heading to Hawkesbury. And someone else said, oh, we'll just go to the Hawkesbury Ferry, cross it, and then we'll go that way. And from previous years' experience, going that way is really good. However, you can be stuck there at the, um, the ferry for an hour and a half fairly easily because there's only so many cars that let's on and off. And, of course, the road lead now there is a goat's track, and you just have to wait and wait. So we decided against that, and everyone did a U-turn, so that was pretty funny. And that's on my Instagram as well if you haven't already seen it. Uh, so there's, you know, half a dozen minis just turning around in the dirt. And was it probably actually more. There was probably eight or nine, maybe even ten minis, including myself, doing a U-turn in the gravel. So it's pretty funny. But, you know, excuse me, that's, that's just what you do. You try and help people and they try and stick on the right track. So what I took away from that is always trust your co-driver, that's for sure. Uh, but when you're sticking with people, it, it does make it easier. This year, we actually stuck to the rules, or well, not so much the rules, sorry, the, the leaflet, and followed it step by step because that's what we wanted to do. And that's what we wanted to experience. So we went through and we uh, looked at the map and, and said, right, well, we need to stick to this to 3.77 kilometres, and we're going to turn left onto to Banks Drive. We're going to follow that for 14 k's and then turn right at the first roundabout whatever the case may be. And that was just really good to be able to properly follow. And three quarters of it, we actually did. And then it wasn't until we got to the other side of the Three Sisters when we met up with Evan and Andrew. And Evan goes, we're just going to hightail it straight to Rolston. Otherwise, if we don't, we're going to get there super late at night and it's going to be far too late. It's going to take us two hours to get there. And if we keep following this route, we'll probably get another hour worth of driving. And then beyond that, you know, we're going to get there well and truly past 6 p.m., which, as you know, out west, the sun goes down pretty early. And because of that, it gets dark. Once it gets dark out west, it can get dangerous. So, yeah, we got lost twice. So the first one is when we're following those minis and we took the wrong route. And then the second time was we found a new place to stay 
uh, which we thought was out at Lou. Now, Lou is spelled L-U-E. So we drove all the way out there. It was about 45 minutes drive from Rolston. All out there, and we just had a massive day of driving. We'd probably been driving for... Since we got up in the morning, probably solid 12 hours. Probably a, a good, or at least close to. So we were driving, and we finally get there, and we rock up this place that's quite dark. And we thought to ourselves, this is odd. Like, it's very dark. There's a house there, and there's a light on there. Oh, maybe we, we go here. So what we've done is knock on the door, and there was someone there, and the guy was looking at us like, can I help you? I said, oh, look, we're here to stay, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, no, this is, you know, her old estate. Um, this is her winery or her old winery. And because I'd looked at the Google map, uh, I hadn't looked at the email that she sent me, which was a different address. Anyway, so he rings her and says, oh, hey, they're here. And she goes, yeah, no, we're, you know, half an hour back down. So then we had to drive another half an hour. So at the moment, we're already over an hour of traveling just to get to our accommodation. So once we finally got there, this place was massive, absolutely massive. And there's three of us. There's 16 available spots to sleep in this house. And I could not believe it. And that's just not 16 beds. That's 16 people easily can sleep there. If you had an extra couple of people, you could easily sleep probably 20. And, you know, two of them would be sleeping on couches. The other two would be on the floor. So it was proper next level. So this massive house, which you guys will see uh, from some of the footage that I uploaded in a couple of days. Now, the footage I got, as I said, there is quite a lot of footage. So essentially what I'm going to do is just make a little mini movie out of it, with no pun intended, uh, or at least a feature-length film. So I think that would be really good for you guys to be able to see. And every year that I do it, I do it under my own... Uh, won't will, and it's, it is my story to tell. So if anyone ever wants me to, to go with them and tell their side of the story, I would love to be able to do it. I think a lot of people do share the same uh, stories and you know what you actually get up to, but you know people just experience different things. You might stick with a group that's really quick or really slow, or you do a lot of stops or you don't, you just power through, you might get lost, you know, you take a completely different route. You know, I think that'd be really cool. So if anyone ever wants me to go with them, please just reach out. I would love to, to just be a co-pilot and, you know, be in another vehicle other than my own. Not that I don't enjoy driving grace because I really do. However, experience it from someone else's point of view, I think it'd be really good. So handing out some of the merch and being part of the event was a really big part of this year. And as I said before, now that more people are starting to recognize who I am and what I do with the Classic Mini community, it really made me have a sense of belonging and self-belief as well. And I've always believed in myself and my goals and my ambitions in life. And the fact that Evan and the crew have allowed me to be a part of this and properly involve me in a lot of the stuff, it's just proper next level. And I, I knew that this time would come, and it might sound cocky me saying that, but if you believe in yourself and your vision, you keep pushing because you believe for what you want in life. And that's exactly what I've done. I've just pushed along and done the things in life that I wanted to do. And and I'm finally getting there, which is great. And I really appreciate everyone. So being a part of not only the event, but also handing out trophies and awards and you know shaking people's hands and get photos with them, it just means the world to me. It genuinely does. So I really enjoyed that, that side of things and I definitely feel that thanking the Rolston crew is probably one of the biggest things that you know both myself and, and you, the follower, can really do is just reach out and just, just say, just send a, a message to Evan and just say thank you. Thank you for a good weekend. Thank you for a, a, a good, long, enjoyable trip that they planned because the amount of stuff that they do behind the scenes, it's proper next level. and. The very first year that I did it, I just went, I didn't donate, I just, you know, rocked up. We did it, we got lost, we had fun, and we drove home. But then last year when we did it, it was a little bit more sentimental because I looked at it from a different perspective, that I was recognised as part of the crew, I was recognised as, you know, a supporter of, of the crew as well. And being able to help people along the way was just amazing. And to be able to 
document all that is just proper next level. And it's not just for my benefit, but it's for yours as well. People out there who are watching this probably may never do the Rolston Classic. You may do something similar and, you know, reminisce about the days in which you did it, you know, 25, 30 years ago, or it might have just been last year or, um, you know, just the month gone by. But it was something, you know, to really be proud of. And I'd really think that thanking the crew is something that we, you know, all need to do to show appreciation because what goes on in the background that they are parents, they are people who are pregnant, who, you know, work full time. There are people who, you know, dedicate months to this and planning the route. And then the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, it's very easy to just rock up and do the event and think, yeah, it's just fine. You know, I'll just do my own thing. You know, don't worry about paying and, you know, do it. And that's fine. But the amount of planning that goes into this thing, it's proper next level and you know it's just like planning anything planning a, a trip you know with your family to go up the coast or to go west or you know travel to another country there's a lot involved and to be able to do this time and time again with all their commitments and doing it full time and the crew that they have i think it's just proper astounding so i'd like to raise this can of pepsi max to evidently crew from the rolson classic to say thank you very much the episode will be dropping shortly thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode of thomas tune-ups <laughs>